Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now looking at the code. So if I didn't mention it before, this is a handout available on the course website. If you have the ability to print it, I highly recommend that you do to make notes on it um, while I'm working through the lesson here. Uh, so this is the code solution for the algorithm that's a little higher up on the handout. And I am going to I am going to rotate back and forth here, so I apologize if it's hard on the eyes. Um, so the first thing in the algorithm, and you'll remember that whenever we do a code solution, it's never line for line of what's in the algorithm. So um, I've gone ahead and set up, whoops, there we go, set up those um, three values, L, R, and M, and then I have a while loop. How did that come about? So back up here in the algorithm, um, I noticed that there is go to step two, go to step two, and uh, step two is line number two here. And when we have a go to, that means that we are looping, right? We want to repeat some of the process. So how do I figure out what kind of loop I'm doing? Well, I know that this was totally conditional. And in my algorithm, once I had read through it and kind of got it, the gist of it, I recognize that my search is done here when this is true. So I take this little chunk of code and that's what becomes my while loop, right? That's when it needs to be finished. And so that means my while loop has to run while it is not true. So I just do the opposite of what that is and that's how I set up that while loop, okay? And the while loop comprised um, the, sorry, the while loop comprised uh, setting or comparing about this L and R. Um, and so why, what was this about making it unsuccessful? Uh, when we have the list, you remember that we started with L and R here and then we moved R down here and we moved L up here and what so on and so on. Imagine I was looking for a value that didn't exist in the list. In this example, maybe T is eight. Um, at some point in time, I would have moved my R here, and then I might have ended up, well not might have, I would have ended up where my L and my R are actually reversed. And that's because I'm splitting a list down to the point where I can't split it anymore, and my indexes, because L was set to like M plus 1 or M minus 1, it actually gets set to the opposite side. And when that happens, there's no values between this anymore. It's like you know, you, you flip something inside out and we have nothing more that we can split. And this is when we know that it's okay to go ahead and terminate, excuse me, to terminate, uh, I'm having a problem, shoot. There we go. Um, it's okay to go ahead and terminate um, the search. So that means uh, we want to return something, right? So a return is what ends the search for us. Um, and typically in a search, when we don't find an item, we return negative one. I'm having trouble here today. Okay, we return negative one. Um, this is just from experience of looking at other code and other searches. Okay, so then the algorithm says, hey, if that hasn't been the situation, we want to go ahead and run these, um, calculate the new value of M, uh, because L and R have maybe been reset, and then run these three conditionals. And so that's what you see here. We're calculating the new value of M, and we don't need to use the floor function. Um, Python got updated however many sessions ago, and they included this double divide, and that's integer division for us. Okay, and then the three conditionals that we have here, either resetting L, uh, resetting R, or returning. Now, if we hit this reset, so say this if statement was true, we had that at one point, we then execute this line of code. Program flow then doesn't have, doesn't do these two things because they aren't true, the if statement was true. So program flow is here. There's no other lines of code to execute, which means then program flow says, hey, I'm inside a while loop, so I need to go back up and reset my while loop, or not reset, rerun my while loop. And that's why we have to first validate, hey, have we exhausted now all of the searching, or now do we have to recalculate M to run these conditionals over again? The last thing that, that may happen is that we hit the true. We saw that when uh, we were looking for the value of 
12 and it, we finally hit it with um, our R or M value and so returning M reminder that returning a statement or return statement in a function terminates the function so no matter where you are in your while loops, how many times you've run it, what's happening, soon as you hit a return statement, the function is instantly done, a value has been calculated, and it's over. Okay, so that's a nice way to be able to end and get out of any particular while loop. You don't need to have any other comparison here. This does the trick. It's quite lovely that way. So this is your code solution. I'd like to make sure that you download the code solution, that you run it and test it against a handful of your own created um, lists. Again, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Um, I've given you a sample that'll be in the code, but I'd like you to go ahead and write some of your own list. Try and insert numbers, or try and look for numbers that don't exist, that don't exist within the list, that don't exist at the beginning of the list, and just validate that you're getting the right index out of it. The more you play with it, the more that you'll feel comfortable with this particular algorithm.